Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be covering what is ARPANET and I will explain ARPANET architecture. Guys, I have uploaded complete computer network subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is ARPANET. Guys, ARPANET stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. As Advanced Research Projects Agency developed this network, that is why they give a name ARPANET, where ARPA stands for Advanced Research Projects Agency and NET stands for Network. So ARPA was the first packet switching network developed in 1969 by ARPA, that is Advanced Research Projects Agency and this agency belongs to US Department of Defense. By using this network, different computers can communicate and share resources. Thus, by using ARPANET, different computers can communicate each other like they can share messages, they can share files, etc. And they can also share resources like printer. Like all computers can use single printer. Guys, ARPANET was the first packet switching network. Before knowing what is packet switching, at first you need to know what is circuit switching. Guys, I will give one simple example so that you can clearly know the difference between circuit switching and packet switching. For example, if you consider circuit switching, all the telephone networks, they are examples of circuit switching. For example, in olden days, we used the landline phones in order to communicate with others. For example, if you want to communicate with your friend using landline phone, then we need cable connection. There is one cable connection need to be established between me and my friend. By using that cable connection, we can communicate with others. There is one dedicated line needed in order to establish connection. The dedicated line is nothing but cable. In circuit switching, that is, in old landlines, Data is transferred very slowly and continuously. And if there is any cable break, entire connection will be lost. And by using circuit switching, we can communicate with only one person at a time. So old landline phones, they are examples of circuit switching. For example, if you consider packet switching, present 4G mobiles, they are examples of packet switching. Guys, the name itself says packet switching. That is, data is divided in the form of packets and they will reach to destination. For example, by using my 4G mobile, I will speak how are you. Guess whenever I speak how are you, then data is divided in the form of packets like how is one packet, R is one packet and U is one packet. So these packets will find best route and they will reach to destination. So this how will find best route, R will find best route and U will find other route. After reaching to destination, they all will reassemble in order like this person will hear how are you. This is packet switching. Where in packet switching, data is divided in the form of packets and they will reach to destination and after reaching destination, they will reassemble and person can hear correct message. When compared to circuit switching, in packet switching, data is transferred in the form of packets. So data transfer is very fast as each packet will find best route. This is difference between packet switching and circuit switching. So this first packet switching was introduced by ARPANET in order to overcome problem of circuit switching. So before ARPANET, computers used circuit switching like telephone networks. This method had problems that is a dedicated line was needed for communication. Only one person could communicate with other at a time. If the line fails, entire connection will be lost. Example landline phones. Now to solve this problem, ARPANET introduced a packet switching where data is broken into small packets and sent separately. Packets will take different paths and reassemble at their destination and multiple devices will use same network. Guys, for example, if you consider ATL 4G, GO 4G, all members will use same network connection in order to communicate. Next, I will explain design of ARPANET. We also call it as ARPANET architecture. ARPANET architecture contains two parts. They are hosts and subnets. Hosts are the computers that need to communicate. For example, I want to communicate with my friend. So my computer and my friend computer. Both act as hosts. Host is nothing but computer which will send information and which will receive information is known as host. So my computer is considered as host and my friend computer is also considered as host. So hosts are the computers that needed to communicate. And whereas subnet mean it is the network that connect to hosts. Guys, subnet is nothing but it is the network that will connect to hosts. And subnets contain two parts there, IMPs and laser lines. Thus, IMPs are nothing but they are devices like routers. For example, if you consider router, 
browsing router we can connect to wi-fi and we can use guys imp stands for interface message processors they are the devices like router we also call this device as special mini computer by using this device hosts can communicate with each other and subnet also contains laser lines laser lines are nothing but cable connections by using laser lines we can connect the imp devices with host computers guys this is arpanet architecture for example this computer want to communicate with this computer so we call these two computers as host guys subnet stands for subnetwork so subnet is nothing but it is a network that contain imp devices and laser lines for example this computer want to send hello to this computer so from laser line that is from cables data is transferred to this imp device and from this imp device data is transferred to any of this imp device and then data is transferred to destination host and laser lines are nothing but they are cables which will connect to different imp devices and host to imp device imp device which is connected to sender computer we call it as source imp and imp device which is connected to destination computer we call it as destination imp this is arpanet architecture arpanet has two main parts one is host they are the computers that need to communicate and second one is subnets subnet is a network that will connect to host devices subnet contains special many computers called imps where imp stands for integrated message processors they will connect to host devices using laser lines guys in this data transfer speed is 56 kb per second and this imp device is also connected to various other imp devices so even though if there is any connection fail simply data will take to other path guys for example whenever i send a hello data is transferred from this device and here there are two ways for example data is transferring from this path and there is cable break so simply instead of this data will take this path and data will successfully reach to destination and in arpanet subnet is the network that contains two components they are imp devices that is interface message processors they are like actual many computers that act like routers and second one is laser lines laser lines are nothing but cable connections which will connect imp devices to each other okay this imp device is responsible to receive data from the host and break data into packets as i already said before arpanet will use packet switching where we will break message into packets and we will send each packet so this imp is also responsible to break data into packets and also it is responsible to send the packets to correct destination imp guys these are improvements in arpanet and the first one is host to host protocol guys protocol is nothing but set of instructions we call set of instructions as protocol by using host to host protocol computers can communicate to each other and second one is application software guys each computer need to install one special software in order to communicate with each other so if you want to use arpanet you need one special software and third one is terminal interface processor guys in olden days when arpanet was first introduced each imp device is connected to single host computer for communication guys in olden days many terminals terminals are nothing but devices with only keyboard and screen we call it as terminal so in olden days many terminals are connected to single cpu as each terminal act as individual computer in this case if you connect imp devices to the cpu only this device will support network communication remaining computers cannot use network so in order to overcome this problem terminal interface processors are introduced where without cpu directly we can connect this device with monitors and we can use network this is where they improved arpanet in the early arpanet one big computer that is computer with cpu could connect to the network using imps terminals that is devices with only screen keyboard and mouse they don't have cpus the devices cannot connect directly to the network so in order to overcome this problem terminal interface processors are introduced where this tip device allows terminals to connect to the network and fourth one is multiple host per imp guys multiple computers can connect to imp devices this is meaning of multi host per imp and fifth one is one host connected to multiple imps guys if you want very fast communication then you can also connect your system with multiple imp devices so data will be transferred successfully even though if there is damage to one imp device other imp device will transfer our data and sixth one is long distance connectivity guys if you see this diagram there are multiple imp devices in different locations 
and all these devices are connected to each other in order to send data. Okay, the server net is very slow. That is, it will transfer data only just 56 KB per second because based on our net, internet is introduced. Even in internet, they use the packet switching where data is transferred in the form of packets.